Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley and today we're starting a reading vlog for The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. This is a very special reading vlog because this is my first community buddy read sort of video that I'm trying out on my channel. It's basically like a book club, except I'm not doing a live show. I'm just doing a premiere of this reading vlog. So hello, if you are in the chat right now watching this premiering, thank you so much for joining me. I hope this is a fun experience for you. Let me know what you think of this. I'm also going to be in the chat, future me, this is past me. So hello to future me as well. But I'm really excited for this reading vlog. I launched a poll to see what book you would be most interested in seeing me do this with and the book of cold cases won by and far on both my youtube community and on my instagram stories so you guys were very hyped for this book and that made me be very hyped for this book because previously i wasn't super looking forward to this book i've read one book from simone st james in the past i read the sundown motel and i enjoyed that book when i read it there were definitely some things that I didn't love as much about that book and maybe I'll talk about that later if they start to come up in this as well. But I was definitely interested in this. It just wasn't my most highly anticipated release of the year, but it seems like it was very high up on many of your list, which makes me all the more excited to read it. So what is this book about? In this book, you're following a true crime blogger who ends up getting more than she bargained for while she's interviewing a woman acquitted of two cold case slayings. The blurb says, some crimes come back to haunt you. You're following two timelines in this story. You've got a timeline in 1977 in Clare Lake, Oregon, and then you also have a timeline in Oregon in 2017. Back in 1977 in Clare Lake, Oregon, the area was shaken by the Lady Killer murders. Two men seemingly randomly were murdered with the same gun with strange notes left behind. Beth Greer was the perfect suspect, but she was acquitted and she retreated to the isolation of her mansion. Now in Oregon in 2017, Shay Collins is a receptionist, but by night she runs a true crime website, The Book of Cold Cases, a passion fueled by the attempted abduction she escaped as a child. When she meets Beth by chance, Shay asks her for an interview. To Shay's surprise, Beth says yes. They meet regularly at Beth's mansion, though Shay is never comfortable there. Items move when she's not looking, and she could swear she's seen a girl outside the window. The allure of learning the truth about the case from the smart, charming Beth is too much to resist, but even as they grow closer, Shay senses something isn't right. Is she making friends with a manipulative murderer, or are there other dangers lurking in the darkness of the Greer house? So from what I know of Simone St. James' writing, because I have also read The Sundown Motel, seems to be something similar she does where she likes to follow two different timelines, one a bit more in the past, one more a bit present day, and there is some sort of of paranormal supernatural infusion in the story as well. So I'm expecting a little bit of maybe ghost vibes in this story. I don't know, but I've been hearing great things so far. So I'm really excited to jump into this book and see how I like it. You're probably wondering how this is going to work if you're watching the premiere and you might be worried about spoilers. So if you've already read the book, that shouldn't be a problem. You should be good to go for the whole video. But if you have not yet read this book and you're just kind of watching the video and you want to make sure you're avoiding spoilers and you're worried about it because it is premiering, I always throw a spoiler bar are on the screen when I'm talking about spoilers. So you will see this on the screen and you can mute until I am done in the spoiler section. If I do end up going into spoilers in the video, if I don't go into spoilers, it's not gonna be a problem at all. But just in case I do, you'll see a spoiler bar, you can mute and you won't have to worry about that section. But I'm gonna go ahead and get started with this book tonight. I'm gonna go ahead and read the first maybe 50 pages or so, and then I'll check in with you when I have a first impression on the story. So I started the book of cold cases last night. I am 44 pages into it. So I just read the first couple of chapters just to see the feel of the book and give a first little update on it. So far, so good, no complaints yet. I'm liking the initial setup. You're getting to know each of the two main women in the book. So you have Beth and Shay. Shay is the one who is a receptionist at some kind of medical office, but then she does true crime blogging at night. And then Beth is the one who was accused of these murders all these years ago. And in the beginning of the book, you're getting to know Shay and see her life. And it's kind of the typical start of someone's life in a thriller where they're down and out and their life's not the best. She is working in her medical office and then Beth ends up in the waiting room and she's like, oh my God, that's Beth Greer. I know who that is. How are you all not freaking out right now? And then she ends up following her and talking to her and getting her to agree to do an interview with her. So that's all that's happened so far, really. There's also was like a, an initial flashback, the very first like scene of the book. I actually don't remember if it was a flashback or not, but it's like haunted house vibes already. Like it's already trying to introduce sort of ghostiness into the story, which is cool. But yeah, overall, I like the writing. I like the atmosphere. I like the character. No complaints yet. So going to keep reading more of this and then I'll let you know when I have more updates. Hello, 
good morning. It's the next day and I've read more of the book of cold cases. I'm at page 132 now, so I'm kind of getting close to the midway point and we have been developing more in the story. So I wanted to update you. I'm still really enjoying the story. I think what I like most about it is just the feel of it. Like I really like the tone, how it's just dark and mysterious and cozy. I don't really know how to describe that, but this book feels really cozy. And I don't know if that's because of my personal preferences and that this just fits like what I like to see in mysteries and thrillers, but it just feels so cozy. And like, I've got some rainy ASMR up on the TV. It's like a more rainy kind of day. I've got this little lamp on and I just feel so cozy reading this book. So if you're someone who likes to cozy up with a book, cozy up with a mystery, so far, this is definitely a really good option for that. But I did wanna talk about a couple other things that are going on in the book in a non-spoilery way. Something that I'm finding really interesting about this story is a couple different ways that it is talking about how women are perceived in society. So with this main character, Beth, who was accused of being the lady killer all these years ago, you're seeing in the present day and the conversations that Shay is having with her and the assumptions that Shay is making about her, but also in the flashbacks and what was really going on when cops were investigating her and just how the media was capturing her. Just this villainization of her as a woman and how the media just latched on to this idea of her being this lady killer. And she says a couple times in here, like I can't remember her exact wording of it, but she's like, I had an ass and tits. And so they were gonna paint me as this like over-sexualized, drinking too much, party kind of girl. I wasn't showing emotion the way that they were expecting me to be showing emotion. And so they just villainized me. And so I think that's a really interesting aspect of the story, just talking about that and also comparing that to like Shay's assumptions about her and even other detectives assumptions about her in one way because the killings of these two men that happened all these years ago were very like strange the motivation wasn't super clear it was just these guys getting stopped on the side of the road and like just shot point blank a note was left and it seems like it was done by a stranger and so everyone's like oh it can't be a woman a woman would never kill someone like that and it's like yeah that's not as prevalent <laughs> in true crime and like most serial killers are men. But I don't know, it's just interesting to think about the assumptions that are made about women. And then also there's also this element coming into the story where Shay's really investigating a lot about Beth's past, about her family, about the killings. And she ends up going through this line of learning more about Beth's parents. And the history behind Beth's parents is that her mother, I'm trying to look back in the book and remember the exact order of what happens, but her mom and her dad both end up dying. I can't remember which one died first. Her dad was murdered and then I, her mom I think got in a car accident. I can't remember exactly, but as I'm flipping back through the book, I'm seeing something else. And it's a quote from Beth, who's talking about how the media is painting her back when all this happened. And she said, they're gonna hate me no matter what I do. Don't you see that? I could be sweet and those lady killer articles are still going to get written. So just like this whole idea around how women are perceived. But what I was getting at with her parents is Shay is finding this angle as she's learning more about best parents that, and I don't consider this a spoiler. This is like a super minor detail in the story. Like it's probably gonna matter, but it's not going to spoil the book for you if you know this one small thing about her mom. But someone says that Beth's mom was like crazy and ended up in this mental hospital. And that's why a lot of things happened. And that's what ruined the whole family. And Shay just like immediately clings onto that. She's like, oh great, now I'm gonna go investigate this and see what's going on. And like, why'd she go, why'd she go to a mental hospital and just try to investigate that angle? And she tells Beth about that. And Beth is like, seriously, you're gonna try to say that my mom was crazy and mentally unstable now? Like there's just all these ideas about how women are perceived, which I'm finding to be super interesting in the story. But yeah, there's so many other things going on with this book. I was just thinking about what else to update on. And there's like all this history with Shay as a main character. She had what's known as the incident when she was nine. I won't spoil what happens for you, but something tragic happened to her in her childhood and that really affects her in her day-to-day -day life. And you keep like learning more about that. She's got her sister in the story and you're learning more about her relationship with her sister and her sister's like trying to push her to really like branch out and get on with her life because Shay is divorced. And like, there's just so many things going on. There's like a romance element in the story as well that I'm really enjoying. And nothing's really happened there yet, but I'm enjoying the potential of it. So yeah, this is like a super rare experience for me reading a book, but I honestly have no complaints at this point. And I'm almost halfway through so this is looking really good. I'm really excited to keep reading more of this. I honestly might try to finish it today because I know there's some reading sprints going on later. It's kind of the perfect cozy day to read this book. So yeah, I might just finish the whole thing today, but I'm gonna read more of it. I'll update you again after I get another like 50 to 100 pages or so in the story. Hello, 
it is a little bit later. I have been doing pretty much nothing other than reading this book for the past couple of hours. And I'm at uh, page 237 now, and there are 337 pages in this book. So I only have 100 pages left. Since we have last spoken, I have decided that I want to spontaneously participate in the backlist readathon, which starts tomorrow. And as I'm sure you all know, this is not a backlist book. So I'm really trying to finish this today. And it's currently 5.30 p.m. I'm still on sprints with Hannah. Hannah and Christina are doing reading sprints because they're doing this big Sarah J. Mass read along thing where they're reading all the Sarah J. Mass books and they're gonna do a live show talking about all the books. I don't know when that is, but I'll put details in the description box down below. But they've been sprinting for a couple hours. So I've been reading with them, not a Sarah J. Mass book, but just hanging out in the reading sprints anyway, trying to finish this book. But yeah, I think I can do it. There's only hundred pages left. I'm pretty sure I can finish it today. And I am still enjoying it. So that makes it even better. A lot has happened since we last spoke, but also not too much. Like it is definitely a slower paced mystery at this point. I ended up breaking into part two of the book and a lot of part two takes part in the past where you're really learning a lot about what happened with Beth. The killer is revealed right at the start of part two, at least who you're still supposed to think is the killer at this far end. So I'm not pretty sure it is. I don't think there's gonna be another plot twist, but like maybe there will be, I don't know. So I thought that was kind of an interesting pacing choice because part two starts around like the halfway point in the book. So around the halfway point, it's like, boom, here you go. Now you know who the killer is, but you just don't know all the details around why. And now you've been learning a lot about the past and how that character plays in the story. So again, I'm still enjoying this, but it does get a little slower in the middle. You do get stuck in the past. I really like being more in the present. I really wanna learn more about Shay. Shay has such an interesting history and I really wanna see how that's gonna come into this. Also, if you've read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, not a thriller book. That one is like a contemporary with like romance elements. But this book reminds me of that. And I've seen Elizabeth from Reading Riley say that too. I've seen her talking about this on Instagram the past week. And she keeps saying that this book reminds her of if Colleen Hoover wrote The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which is really funny. But yeah, this does remind me of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo because that book is all about this journalist getting the opportunity to interview this really famous woman who's been very secretive about her whole life. So this has a very similar setup to that. One of the big things in The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo is you're wondering why that famous person decided to finally tell all her secrets to this interviewer. And so that's what I'm also wondering in this book, if there's gonna be a particular reason. There are things that you learn about Shay, but I'm like, is that it? Or are we gonna learn something more? And I'm really just curious to see how the rest of the book wraps up because like I said, I mean, the killer has been revealed. We've been talking about that for a long time. We've been stuck in the past getting a lot of history. So I really wanna know what's gonna happen in the next 100 pages. Are there going to be twists? Am I gonna be surprised by something else? Cause right now I'm just kind of like, I feel like we've got all the pieces to the puzzle already. So I don't know where else we're gonna go with this. But yeah, still enjoying it just it is going to kind of depend on if the end can still surprise me or not so I'm going to fly through the last 100 pages of this first I'm actually probably going to take a shower because I feel like I just need a shower to take a break and reset and then I also need to order dinner and so I'm going to try to do all of that I know my partner also wants to watch the new Spider-Man movie tonight because it's finally available on streaming services so I've got a lot to do and not a lot of time but we're going to make it happen I'm so determined to finish this today I did it I finished this book all yesterday all last night it is the next day though but I just figured I would wait to update you so that I would be a little more presentable and in daylight because it was late when I finally finished this book last night. But I finished it and I did end up enjoying it overall. But I do have some complaints about it, especially like the last half of the book and where the story ends up going and what it does with the pacing of all of that. Like I mentioned before, I was really looking for some kind of surprise or reveal or something interesting since the killer is revealed super early on. It's revealed at the start of part two, which let me see exactly where that is. So that's at 158 pages into the story. So around like the 40, 45% mark in the story, you get pretty much all the information you're gonna get. And then the rest is just seeing the fallout of that for the most part. I mean, there's still things that happen and like minor things and minor information that is being revealed. But in terms of it being like thrilling and getting that like twist satisfaction, this doesn't do that super great. But overall as like a mystery thriller, I did still enjoy it. I really liked the atmosphere throughout. I liked the tone of the story. I liked the supernatural elements and like the paranormal ghosty things going on. I was worried I was gonna think that was cheesy, but it was fine for me. I didn't love it, but I definitely didn't hate it. It didn't bother me. I didn't think it it was too unrealistic, I guess. I mean, obviously with all like paranormal, supernatural, horror thriller stuff, it's not going to be realistic unless like you're having 
those kind of experiences in your life. But I just don't read a lot of that. So I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel because I feel like that's not my favorite thing in movies. So I just wasn't sure with the book. And that was like one of the complaints I have with the Sundown Motel when I read it a couple years ago was I thought the ghost stuff was cheesy. But in this, I thought it was perfectly fine. So overall, I think I'm gonna end up giving it like a four star. I had a really enjoyable time reading it. It kept me engaged. I didn't feel bored reading it. I didn't feel like I was dragging through it, but it wasn't the perfect book. There are definitely complaints I have. And there are some specific things that really bothered me about the ending that I do wanna talk about in a spoilery capacity. So that is all a wrap on the non-spoilery portion. I'm gonna talk about spoilers for like eh, a minute or two. So you can mute me. If you're watching on the premiere, if you're watching later, you can just skip the section. I'm gonna put the spoiler bar on the screen and you can mute or skip to where you no longer see the spoiler bar on the screen. So you don't have to hear these spoilers. The main thing that really bothered me about the ending, and I'd be really curious to hear how other people feel who have read the book. But the one thing that really bothered me about the ending is how in the end, Shay like betrays Beth in a way and really wants her to go to jail or prison because you find out throughout the story that it wasn't Beth who was the killer. It was her half sister, Lily, who nobody knows about. And Shay ends up finding that out that she had a half sister who was just this really evil person who ended up killing a lot of people. And Beth knew that. And Beth feels a little bit of accountability for not stopping Lily when she knew Lily was doing bad things. But that's not Beth's fault, in my opinion. Sure, there's things she could have maybe tried to do, but at the end of the day, it was Lily murdering people. So that's like Lily's problem. And yeah, Beth probably should have told someone, but like, I don't know, it's it's not like she was murdering people. That doesn't, I mean, I guess it does make her guilty by association in the eyes of the law. But in my eyes, in the framing of this story, if you look at everything that Beth has gone through, this whole life she's lived, how she has been incriminated for a crime she didn't do, how the media has perceived her, how she can't even live in comfort in her hometown, her whole life was ruined because she had this half sister who was just going around murdering people. And Shay builds this connection with her throughout the story. So it was just so bizarre to me that as soon as Shay learns about all of this and then when she learns that Beth ended up killing Lily like Beth put a stop to Lily murdering people because Beth killed Lily and Shay learns that and she's like Beth needs to go to prison for the rest of her days which are numbered because she has an aneurysm and she's gonna die anyway but I think she needs to spend the rest of her days in prison for murdering her murderous half-sister who nobody knew about and nobody cared was gone that just rubbed me weird to just see Shay turn on her so easily. I just didn't understand that from her character perspective. I didn't understand why she was making that choice and why she felt that way. I'd really be curious to hear your thoughts if you felt that was all so strange or if you side with Shay. I don't know, but to me, it was just very, very strange. <laughs> Otherwise, there's just a couple other things in the story that I'm just not sure why there were parts of the story. Like you hear a lot about Shay's relationship with her sister and she becomes like a supporting force for Shay. But then you learn about her having fertility issues and that kind of becomes a part of the story and her like secretly doing IVF. And I'm like, why was that a part of the story? Like, what did that do to serve the plot? And that could just be triggering for people. So if you don't have like a purpose to throw that in there, it feels kind of weird to throw that in there. And then also just like the relationship stuff with Michael, the guy who is like a private investigator who helps out Shay and they fall in love. But at the end of the book, it's just like, and boom, they were in love and they lived happily ever after and Shay went about her life. And so I wish like something else would have been done there. It seems weird that there was never any like secret that he was hiding from her. Like that's kind of what you expect when there's a love interest in a thriller mystery. So like part of me is like, great, glad you didn't over exhaust that and make it be like, oh, was he actually a bad guy? Not actually a love interest. But also I'm like, what was the point of having him be so much of a story if you didn't really do anything with that? So there's just like these tiny things that bother me about the ending, but I did still overall enjoy the book. So I do still think it's a four star for me. I do still recommend it. I do like it. It'll be like probably in my top mystery thrillers for the year, but there were just a few things that I could not help but be like, what the heck is going on here? <laughs> okay, but that is it for all of my thoughts on the book of cold cases. If you joined me on the premiere, thank you so much for being here. Hopefully we can do this again in the future. I thought this was a lot of fun. I guess I don't really know because I'm still in the past and I'm not in the premiere yet, but I'm sure we're having a blast in the chat. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about this format. Let me know if you'd like to do it again. Give me all your thoughts. Also, let me know if you have read the book of cold cases, whether you're in the premiere or you're watching this later, let me know in the comments or in the chat what you thought about the book of cold cases, how you rated it, if you agreed or disagreed with some of my sentiments. And let me know if you'd like to see me do this all again with a different book. But that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.